good morning this is dr kamran okay i'm going to discuss today sequences of the lecture like breast topic okay first of all we have discussed breast clinical examination and uh, that is like uh, most like live demonstration of that one but uh, i tried to explain it in the pictures okay then we have discussed in the second lecture like benign breast diseases okay so how you can differentiate and discuss with the patient like uh, with the triple assessment like uh, what it because patient usually comes with the like complaint it could be something mitotic lesion or cancer so you have to differentiate you must okay so it totally like uh, with the clinical examination imaging studies like approach would be different regarding the diagnosis of the disease so today here we can start like uh, today i'm going to discuss regarding the breast cancer okay breast cancer like uh, it's begins in the breast tissue okay it, like as you know uh, regarding the anatomy of the breast so there are ducts and lobules okay so 15 to 20 lobule lobes are like uh, in the breast so it could be arise from the duct epithelium could be from the lobes like uh, uncontrolled proliferation of the breast cells that leads to cancer okay that is not controllable so that like uh, clinically examination like it comes like a lipoma or a, a tumor growth is formed so like uh, how the breast cancer present like that okay so incidence of the breast cancer like uh, it's some um, you know like uh, mostly in the female it's a uh, 1% in the male but mostly in the female like uh, it's a uh, 20% of the female cancer death that is the incidence most commonly above the 50 years but it can be rare cases exceptional cases strong family history first degree relatives it can be in the early age okay so so most commonly like in the above 50 years okay so in most of the countries they have started the screening program regarding like mammogram or other screening studies so that they can catch the cancer in the early stage so that it have a better survival rate so what could be the most possible site of the like this cancer it's in the upper outer quadrant most likely of the breast there are four quadrants of breast as you know it's in the upper inner lower inner outer upper and uh, outer like uh, lower quadrant of the breast so it's a most likely upper outer quadrant of the breast 60% affect on the upper outer quadrant so more as obvious like uh, female are more prone to like uh, male so 99 into 1 so female sex is more prone to breast cancer so race like uh, is most likely in the white and then the black so synchronous lesions could be 1% like uh, within the certain time period at the same time a metachronous lesion 5% so what could be the risk factors okay so uh, these things should be in mind as you know like ge genetic studies okay it's a uh, very less likely we do in pakistan like genetic studies like uh, barka 1 barka 2 there are clear like barka 1 is more like uh, prevalent and uh, if the patient have this one barka 1 so um, her like uh, families relatives should be screened okay so she is more prone to breast ca most likely 70% of the breast ca so 50% of the female like uh, ovarian Uh, ovaries can be affected with this genetic mutations barka 1 barka 2 and leaf romani syndrome is also associated bunch of the diseases that uh, 
also more prone to the breast ca cow dung disease along with the other diseases so cow dung disease cow dung disease is another one pewds jagger syndrome those patients who have the pewds jagger syndrome as you know like uh, oral mucosa changes in oral mucosa gut involvement so breast cancer incidence would be higher in these patient genetically if you go for the genetic studies okay family history family history like uh, as you know when you take history you ask for the family history first degree relative okay a race occurred if the premenopausal bilateral affect two or more first degree okay so it's like a different classification if the patient you ask clearly in the like uh, history what is the age of those patients who got this breast cancer so it will give us clue family history is very important hormonal factors how much hormones exposure to the breast so early menarche it like in the menses start in the so estrogen exposure would be higher to the breast late menopausal more estrogen reproductive phase so late menopause so it could be more exposure to the nulliparity is an other like uh, um, risk factor for the this on breast cancer non lactating women that could also be a major like a uh, risk factor for the breast cancer so patient who are using like uh, contraceptives hormone replacement therapy so they are more prone to the breast cancer precancerous lesions if the patient has become, like have the ductal papilloma so it can be like a transform or dysplasia or into the different stages then can lead to the precancerous lesions so epithelial hyperplasia so you have, should be very vigilant and put her on the follow up for the these precancerous lesions carcinoma in situ okay 5 to 10 times okay carcinoma in situ if you go for this one if you diagnose this patient with carcinoma in situ okay so you put her on the follow up screening like and uh, be vigilant regarding these patients because they have more tendency and risk for the breast cancer dietary environmental factors obvious patient who is more alcoholic more obese because as obese patient have more fat estrogens exposure and so all these things hormonal exposure radiation exposure so all these patient give a stimulus to the breast and that can like uh, lead to the breast cancer previous breast cancer so all these could be the risk factor in the patient so uh, you we have while we take the history and uh, ask uh, about the other like uh, uh, important risk factors for the patient so you have to be know about all these risk factors so that you can have a better idea about the diagnosis so how is the like uh, pathology okay there are different classification who classification like non invasive carcinoma and invasive carcinoma inflammatory carcinoma non invasive carcinoma categorized like ductal carcinoma in situ lobular carcinoma in situ pechet disease of the nipple there is no mass it's just a, like eczematous lesion if it is a unilateral breast like it could be most likely pechet disease of the nipple so and you don't find any swelling underneath the periareolar region so but there are carcinoma in situ okay invasive carcinoma invasive carcinoma like most likely ductal carcinoma 80% of the patients have the like a ductal carcinoma so lobular carcinoma 10% mucinous carcinoma 2% deep medullary carcinoma 5% papillary carcinoma 1% tubular 1% there are different names comes under the ductal carcinoma so adenoid cystic carcinoma secretory juvenile carcinoma so apocrine carcinoma so these are different name different history we classify them according to the histopathological features so carcinoma with the metaplasia metaplastic carcinoma so these are the incidents of the different types of the carcinomas okay so according to the classification it could be non invasive it doesn't breach the basement membrane and invasive it breach the basement membrane and proliferate further so inflammatory carcinoma an other type of breast cancer 
so carcinoma in situ like it doesn't penetrate the basement membrane of the cell okay so ductal carcinoma in situ or in from the terminal duct to the lobular units okay what could be the clinical picture mass pain discharge it could be ipsilateral common 25 to 70 percent patient ductal carcinoma in situ lobular carcinoma no clinical signs no micro calcification by mammogram bilateral and uh, less 25 to 35 percent so lobular carcinoma Paget's disease like affecting nipple and are areola okay eczema like condition female more than 40 okay. 1 to 2 percent of the breast cancer so these are the carcinoma in situ pictures so ductal carcinoma in situ type that would be the 80 percent okay then subclassify into papillary subtype cribriform subtype histopathically we divide into different classification like a solid subtype comedo type comedo versus non comedo subtypes more malignant than the non comedo so all these comes under the ductal cell in situ carcinoma types okay so how is the another picture that will uh, show you give you better idea the ductal cancer cells normal ductal cells so how it does look like okay so these are different pictures while proliferation of the cells normal cells how does it look like in the first picture then ductal hyperplasia atypical ductal hyperplasia atypical cells ductal carcinoma in situ so so that and other like uh, second last ductal with micro invasion okay so later late when it uh, invades the basement membrane so it's a uh, label as invasive ductal carcinoma so how is it works like uh, ductal carcinoma in situ so like paget disease of the nipple we can discuss this one paget disease of the nipple eczema like condition of the nipple and areola okay there could be mass there could be no mass behind the areola in the paget's disease so hyperplasia of all the layers of epidermis thickening of epidermis followed by ulceration of skin so paget cells like uh, large cells clear cytoplasm small dark nuclei so these are the histopathological pictures so you can label it paget cells how the paget cells looks like it is a, like a round plasma cell infiltration of the dermis so staging like without mass stage zero carcinoma in situ with mass according to the mass size okay its prognosis like uh, if patient comes in early stage it's a good prognosis because it's a have a slow rate of growth so how the page disease of the nipple because you have to differentiate between the simple dermatitis and between the page disease you cannot ignore the patient with the just simple like a eczema dermatitis so next here comes the invasive breast cancer infiltrating ductal carcinoma like 75 percent of the all the breast cancer histologically tumor cells arranged in groups called gland like structures so cirrhosis carcinoma hard inconsistency like gross cut section gritty sensation retract below the cut surfaces so these are the just a uh, little bit idea about the infiltrating ductal carcinoma when it's invade how it behave being infiltrating lobular carcinoma 5 to 10 percent of the breast cancer have abundant fibrous trauma macroscopically cirrhosis cells are small uniform dispersingly and columnar one cells wide these are just histology pathological you know one or two like features uh, just little bit idea how to differentiate between the others so Mm, most important you should know little bit clinical picture and uh, idea about the incidence and uh, like this one uh, histopathological features so it will mm, help in differentiation between the other 
as you know lobular carcinoma and they know usually like if it is diagnosed or uh, in genetic studies even they go for the prophylactic mastectomy as you know angelina jolie like a uh, californian actress hollywood actress she underwent this one prophylactic bilateral prophylactic mastectomy to avoid the cancer but new study there is no benefit over the prophylactic other types like uh, same thing like medullary carcinoma like it's a large soft well circumscribed lesions bulky and soft mucinous tubular carcinoma only when 71st tumor is tubular formed so it's labeled as tubular carcinoma it's according to their histopathological pictures okay how does it look like we usually name it and uh, presence of the papilla mastitis carcinoma tosis most malignant form and during the pregnancy as we simulate like as we um, like uh, say like it's a uh, uh, like uh, com um, difficult to differentiate between the like inflammatory like any lesions abscess or any mastitis so it could be inflammatory breast cancer during the pregnancy and it's a very challenging lesions so how does it spread breast cancer like local spread it could be into the skin muscle through the lymphatic axillary nodes first it drain into the from the upper outer quadrant to the 75 percent axillary nodes 20 percent in the internal memory nodes and through the bloodstream like uh, local spread through the lymphatics and bloodstream like lungs bones liver and brain so bone mats may appear before lung lumbar vertebra because there is no valve in the vertebral vessels so it's easily spread to the vertebra so lumbar vertebra femur thoracic vertebra skull we, these are patho patient present with the pathological fracture later you find that it could be due to the ca breast so transperitoneal transcelomic spread like uh, malignant ascites as you heard very fancy name krukenberg tumor like ovaries it bilateral it in the premenopausal so douglas poet rectal shelf of the plumber another name so this could be lesions while you are investigating about the breast cancer these things should be in mind how does it like uh, it's through the lymphatics blood stream through the bone mats transperitoneal transcelomic spread so how would you diagnose breast cancer as you know like a history clinical examination you have to keep in mind certain risk factors radiology like mammography in like um, more than 35 years if it is in the like uh, family history then you five years earlier than that you can start the mammography so ultrasound like it's a non-invasive you can start any time to just to evaluate the lesions so pathology like uh, there are different fnac core biopsy true cut biopsy fnac will give you site simple cytology core biopsy will give you other features like it could give you histopathology feature could give you receptor status okay and the and third way of the biopsy is the surgical incisional or axinal biopsy so how you can that can help in diagnosis so how the clinical presentation like painless lump really there is no pain rare symptom nipple discharge could be bloody discharge paget disease of the nipple as like eczema mastitis inflammatory carcinoma skin manifestation patient could be in, in like a pd orange shape or a dimpling nipple manifestations and metastatic presentation could be pathological fracture anywhere uh, else you find the uh, like uh, symptoms so you can investigate and find there is an other lesion like uh, there could be breast cancer regional axillary and supraclavicular lymph nodes if you find there is a lump in the axilla when you find like there is a lesion in the breast so all these manifestations in a different way asymptomatic like accidentally during the screening program you find the lesions okay so symptoms of breast cancer how does you can evaluate like it could be lump cold in nipple dimpling dimpling 
due to the like a uh, fixation of the suspensory ligaments and dripping sensation like dripping fall off from the chest so redness and rash due to if it is inflammatory invading the skin so it could be redness and rash arthritis changes skin changes pudi orange or uh, uh, like uh, teething so these are the skin changes you can have idea about the carcinoma so painless numb discovered accidentally by the patient during the bathing physical examination so on examination you will be non tender irregular shape ill defined not circumscribed okay sometimes fixed in the late stages to the skin or to the muscles underlying so pain could be due to the infiltration of nerves infection okay patient could have more pain when it invades the neural nerves and uh, brachial plexus and like uh, nerves like uh, posterior axillary line it could be like nerve to let's say most dorsi and nerve to serratus anterior when there is a advanced age it could invade the in, in the subcostal nerves like uh, under the ribs so intercostal nerves so that could be lead to more pain so in nipple discharge bloody nipple discharge like uh, ductal carcinoma and necrotic de degenerating carcinoma advanced stage so that could be the manifestations of the how the major disease of the nipple like uh, there is a breast lesion like flanking lesion crusty okay cracked nipple so how is the manifestation patient comes to you with the like dermatitis and uh, redness of the breast so inflammatory carcinoma and other like usually in the pregnant and lactating breast you can be difficult to differentiate whether it could be benign or malignant so you have to be vigilant about the inflammatory carcinoma so skin manifestation due to the cooper's ligament infiltration dimpling teething puckering okay due to the direct skin infestation skin fixation ulceration fungation and uh, nipple retraction so all these lead to the skin infiltration as you know like dimple in the this one uh, orange is it just look like on the breast so it's due to the ligament infiltration it pulls down and leads to the dimpling due to the lymphatic involvement pud orange pitted edema satellite nodules on the breast and uh, there are uh, other involved like uh, venous involvement dilated veins so next one you go for the imaging like a uh, mammography okay for help in diagnosis if it is multicentric disease so indication like female more than 35 doubtful mass nipple discharging major disease you don't feel any mass so you have to find out the other lesion so you have to go for the mammography or uh, sometimes it's a, like uh, on the x ray it looks like spicules radical spicules emerging from the one center and it uh, give you idea about the lesion so ductography feeling defect in the duct and uh, ultrasound it will also give you solid and cystic differentiation in the patients and uh, regularity and encapsulated uh, form of the and benign and versus malignant diseases it will give you little bit idea mri it helps in the like uh, fibrosis and recurrent uh, breast cancer patients so it also helps mri helps in the lobular carcinoma of the breast so that will help in diagnosis here you can see the like uh, mammogram pictures okay there is a like a uh, normal mammogram there is an other like a uh, uh, lesion in the whitish lesion okay so it could be need to be investigated what it could be in the old age usually it could be galactose like uh, that one and other benign pathology so how that like uh, carcinoma this like uh, ill defined margins low level heterogeneous internal echoes so you can differentiate cystic lesions okay there is no internal echoes clearly defined posterior wall so enhancement of the distal echo so how does this picture look like so biopsy you go for the biopsy you plan so cytology fnc will give you cytology okay so these are the different classifications like uh, c0 c1 to 5 so how is the 
like uh, it will give you idea about the cells so true cut biopsy if the lesion is more than 3 cm you can feel it then you can localize it otherwise you have to you need ultrasound help for the true cut biopsy because you have to hit the tissue that is more prone to breast cancer okay so mm, another classification like b1 to b5b okay so how could the suspicions of lee and borderline and all these will give you the in the true cut biopsy so investigation for the metastasis you have to see the lungs x-ray and ct scan liver liver function test ultrasound ct bone survey and scan and uh, this one brain ct so tnm staging there are different tnm stagings tumor node and metastasis it's all in the books just have a idea about the like t0 no evidence of the primary tumor carcinoma in situ t1 less than 2 cm t2 2 to 5 t3 more than 5 and t4 any size with the like uh, t4 fixation to chest wall ribs pectoralis and skin involvement so all these different classification it will help in staging so like uh, lymph nodes n0 no lesion you can clinically palpate the lymph nodes and one like a ipsilateral mobile and two fixed lymph nodes would be there and three could be to the behind the axilla so same like metastasis like no evidence of mets m0 and m1 to the distant mets so tnm staging like it will help in the staging okay so stage 0 carcinoma in situ stage 1 less than 2 cm no nodes 2 2 to 5 plus minus nodes stage 3 locally advanced disease and for distant disease so how you can like uh, make a plan to manage the patients so mm, here comes the breast cancer treatment how would you approach the patient like it's a just a multi modality disease it's a systemic disease need multi disciplinary team to manage this breast cancer patients so you need surgery chemotherapy radiation so all different department hormonal treatment so all different options you have to discuss the patient before doing surgery or any intervention so it's better to be discuss in the multi disciplinary team for the best management best outcome survival rate so early breast cancer treatment like uh, non invasive stage 0 here is a few combinations surgery plus adjuvant therapy stage 1 and 2 surgery plus post operative therapy so advanced breast cancer like you can uh, have option like a new adjuvant before surgery you can go for the therapy 4 to 5 3 to 4 cycles you can give and then you can do the surgery stage 4 like uh, systemic therapy and uh, limited surgery it's a uh, most likely stage 4 is palliative treatment so early breast cancer you can go for the lumpectomy mastectomy lymph nodes under the arm removed if it is a bother some so you can approach like that way so there are different option for the surgery mastectomy breast conserving there are also indications for the mastectomy and breast conserving like uh, mastectomy if it is a tumor more for more than 4 cm multicentric central retroareolar location yeah you have to go for the mastectomy breast conserving if it is a cosmetic related and patient worry about the like uh, physical appearance so breast conserving surgery like tumor should be less than 4 cm and uh, uni center okay single centricity of the patient like a lesion so go for the bcs so here are the different options like you can give the transverse incisions oblique and you can modify according to the but not too much and like a uh, for a deviate from the transverse line so it gives you good if it is more in the like a uh, transfer form it will near the inframammary line so it will give you better cosmetic results so as we have already discussed in the breast conservation surgery like what are the indications single tumor tumor size less than 4 cm no peripheral location no signs of local advancement so go for the bcs and according to the breast size breast tumor size contraindication as you know like uh, 
opposite to that one indication like multi central tumor size central location signs of local involvement so all these different things in the bcs so early breast cancer like uh, stage 1 and 2 you go for the like uh, do the lumpectomy or other option mastectomy go for the radiation with after that axillary surgery in the breast cancer like axillary lymph node dissection 1 and 2 should be removed like uh, sentinel lymph node biopsy level 1 up to the medial border of the it's uh, just uh, in the like later border of the pectoralis minor and uh, to like uh, behind the pectoralis minor and uh, behind the pectoralis minor would be level 3 so sentinel lymph node biopsy if you clinically impalpable so you go for the sentinel lymph node biopsy to find out if it is uh, spreading the breast cancer or localizing it axillary lymph node sampling at least you have to four or five palpable lymph nodes from the level 1 so late stage like first you have to as i mentioned like new adjuvant chemotherapy 3 to 4 cycle then surgery here is the sequence so surgery then go for the post operative chemotherapy 6 cycles and post operative radiotherapy so here is locally advanced cancer so late breast cancer here is an other sequence like it depends upon the hormone like er positive er negative okay so your strategy plan would be different er positive hormonal therapy okay er negative then chemotherapy and uh, you have to check the response and uh, surgery like uh, palliation for the pilot mastectomy if needed so hormonal treatment many breast cancer blocked by the taking hormone therapy so treatment is in the form of pill which is taken for the 5 years like tamoxifen as you know so, uh, er agonist antagonist so you have to be decide and plan about the treatment